You probably heard the name Varroa bee mite. Uh, it arrived in New Zealand a number of years ago in the North Island and has been spreading south. Beekeepers, of course, are very concerned about this mite. Uh, it seems to latch onto the bees and, um, and basically kill them. It gets into a hive and it decimates the hive. Bees, of course, are very important to the horticulture industry, very important to humanity, really. Um, there are some doomsday scenarios predicted that if, di- if the bees disappeared, uh, we wouldn't be growing enough food, we'd starve, and, um, and the world uh, would change as we know it. Um, but there are people around the world who are trying to get onto this problem and figure out how to get rid of the Varroa bee mite. Well, Ron Hoskins is one such man. He's from Swindon in the UK. He's a beekeeper from the town, and he spent the last 18 years looking for a bee that is resistant to the parasite uh, blamed for killing millions of bees around the world. And he joins us on the line this morning. Hello to you, Ron. Hello. Now, uh, 18 years. Gosh, it's a long time to be um, focusing on on the bee mite, but I, I'd imagine being a beekeeper, uh, that keeps you pretty pretty busy throughout the day regardless. But, it does uh, indeed, but I am nearly 80, so I've got the time to do it these days. Of course. Being retired. Um, now, is, is, the, is the bee mite a problem where you are and there in Swindon? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It's, uh, in, the, in the past three years, uh, we lost 32% in England alone, 32% of all colonies of bees three years ago. That dropped to 26% two years ago, and it was 17% last year. But this is probably due to the fact that we've got far less bees. So beekeepers are taking a lot more care than they probably used to. Yeah. Now, um, well, I mean, this bee mite, what, what exactly does it look like, this Varroa bee mite? Well, it's, it's, it, 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 it was described to me many years ago as having a carapace like a crab, eight truncated legs like a crab on the forward side of its body like a crab and everybody assumed it was hard and bony like a crab right and it is not it is very soft okay and because they felt it was hard and bony they felt that chemicals was the only form of treatment now i used to artificially inseminate i still do but i used to artificially inseminate before varroa came along yeah and my queens were always accepted by the by the hive the new hive suddenly they were being rejected and it was because the chemicals that we were using was causing the viability of the uh, drone to cause it to fire blanks uh, laterally so, so, so the, therefore the, the, yeah, the, the, the supposed solution was actually causing more problems than it was solving that's correct ah. that's correct you can't you can't treat a, a colony of bees to try to cure one thing without affecting something else right and that's exactly what was happening and and so I stopped using chemicals. I, I didn't re- resort to any other means of, of control. I, I looked at them and said, well, if they're going to die, they're going to die. I can't afford to keep treating them with chemicals if they're going to be rejected. Yeah. So it was a bit of a doomsday thought on my part of the, on that day. But suddenly I noticed that one or two colonies were becoming extra strong, okay. stronger than they had been since the Vera arrived. And... Uh, um, and when I started to study the uh, the floor, because we, what we were doing was putting a tray under the floor, counting the mites on the floor to determine when we should have to treat. Yeah. And when I started looking at these mites, uh, I looked at them under a microscope one day, and I found that some of them were damaged. Then I found that one colony, when I checked the actual numbers, one colony, the, the, the damage was quite severe. The carapace was being torn, so they weren't hard and bony. They were quite soft and fleshy. Wow. Okay. And the carapace was being torn, legs were being chewed off, and one colony was, was grooming like 60%, another colony only 4%. At that time, we didn't know if it was a learning curve or what, so we swapped the two queens over. Eventually, the 4% went up to 60, and the 60 went down to 4. Wow. So it was, it was definitely genetic. So uh, uh, did you observe the bees uh, grooming other bees of the mite? I have done since. I hadn't at that time. Um, yes, and, and uh, uh, but what we did then was obviously we, we selected uh, colonies with, with drones, colonies with, uh, to breed the queens from, and we conducted uh, instrumental insemination in, in order to fix the strain. We went on from there, and now these days the bees themselves have developed the ability to actually, because the mite breeds in the cell on the baby bee. Okay. That's where, that's where they breed. Yeah. And my bees now know that those mites are in there chomping away at the baby larva and they are uncapping that larva 
and dragging it out and dropping it away from the hive. Golly, they're so smart. They, so, so they've broken the breeding cycle, as it were. And, and now and I've not treated chemically or any other means for 11 years. And, the, and so this isn't by your design. This is really um, by chance. It's by chance. Uh, the, the, every, bee, every beekeeper's got the same opportunity. This is, the, this is the point that I would like to make. Every beekeeper's got the same opportunity to collect those mites from under their hive, put them under a microscope, and look for severe damage. Somebody said that the dents that are on the carapace can sometimes be a natural phenomenon of the varroa mite. Mm. But a torn carapace and legs chewed off are not. Mm. And, and it needs a, a mesh on the bottom of the hive and then a tray underneath that, and the tray should be um, nice and clean so that you can see the mites and you pick them off with a very, very fine paintbrush, uh, artist paintbrush, and you don't damage them yourself, and you put them under a microscope and you examine them. Having done that, you see the damage, and the colonies that are doing it best breed from. So, so could you see colonies, rather than completely getting rid of the varroa bee mite, they will no, sort of no, live with them? Get, they'll never get rid of it. The problem with with the mite, we'll, we'll use a factor of 10, it isn't quite that, but if one said that the uh, varroa mum goes into the cell and lays 10 eggs on that larva, uh, the bee larva, when the bee larva comes out, which it does at 20 days, 21 days, it's had its lifeblood sucked and its wings are stunted, it will never fly, it will never fetch food for the colony. Okay. Those 10 mites come out and within a few days they go into 10 new cells on new larva and do it again. So 10 becomes 100, becomes 1,000, becomes 10,000. That's when the damage is done. If you can control those numbers to a minimum, then there is no serious damage. There's always damage, but not serious enough to cause the colony to collapse through starvation. Is it, is it possible to um, breed uh, smart colonies straight away rather than um, uh, waiting for colonies to, to learn this behaviour? Well, you've got to identify it. So yes, it is if you take the trouble. And, and we didn't know at that time what we were looking for. Nobody did. Um, we didn't realise that the bees would develop the ability to groom. Mm. And so we were throwing chemicals at them, you see, as a beekeeping nation. Uh, we were throwing chemicals at them, and all sorts of chemicals come to that. Uh, we were doing more harm than good. Mm. If we'd have left them alone, they would have found a technique themselves. The trouble is that on the way, you will lose a lot of bees. But if you can isolate the ones that are doing it best, you can quickly restock your colonies. We started off with 80, we went down to 40, then we got back up to 80 again. But the 80 now survive. Mm. So you've got um, now what you call the, the Swindon honey bee. Um, is, is there any way now to, to breed more of those and get them around oh, the world, yes. get, bring them to New Zealand? Well, uh, we don't know if we can do that quite because we, we've got to establish them in this area first. But what I've got is an isolated apiary. And so, therefore, any natural mating that takes place is, is condensed around my apiary. Mm. So what we're, after, what we're doing now, and this is what the, where this has all come about, we've asked for funding. And as soon as we ask for funding, people have woken up to the fact that we've got a smart bee. Uh, we want funding to distribute this bee around the district, first of all, and then on a, on a broader scale, and gradually we're going to build it up until it's over the south of England, then all over England, and perhaps, as you say, around the world. Mm. Well, there are some, um, some great pictures on this up at uh, moreabeekeepers.co.uk uh, forward slash Stanton underscore park. Uh, and uh, you'll be able to see uh, some, of, um, some of Ron's work up there. Thanks so much for telling us um, about it, Ron. Thank you. That is, uh, yeah, that yeah. is Ron Hoskins from, uh, from Swindon talking there about the Varroa Bee Mites. Track now from Hangman. This here is called Do It. A little something for the weekend, Sam.